Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to this week's Equipment Autopsy. In this autopsy, we're taking apart a Firestorm by Black & Decker. It is totally the most elite, hardcore, rock out, reciprocating, totally not a sawzall, reciprocating saw you will ever know. It's absolute garbage. This, this is the worst reciprocating saw I've ever seen. It is very, very chintzy. It is all plastic and I am not even a little bit impressed. So I think the best thing that we can do is take it apart. So in an awesome bit of cannibalism, I'm going to use my Black & Decker pivot driver to take apart the Black & Decker firestorm. So here we go. I want the other one. I totally want the other one. That's our case screws bunch of little orange fluffy. It's like Halloween over here. And how do I get this off? Oh, there's holes for it. Okay, that's cool. Cool. So here's the presser foot. This is the part of using a reciprocating saw that nobody ever does right. It's really easy to spot an amateur with a recip saw because people that don't know how to use them, when they're cutting something, they'll hold the saw, like if, if they're trying to cut this, they'll hold the saw back here and it's all moving around. This exists for a reason. If you're cutting something like this with the saw, push it up right to it. And that keeps the saw from jerking up. That's what this is for. You need this. I don't. So, we've got that all down. I think that's all of them. Yeah, this one doesn't appear to be all the way out. There we go. Okay, now we just gotta crack the case. Which side wants to be up? I'm gonna say this side. Come on apart, there you go. Okay, we pull all the guts out. Yep. Don't need that. Now inside, it gets way more interesting. Let's... Yeah, we don't need any of that. All right, now inside, it's pretty simple, but pretty cool. And we've got... Here, we've got the motor unit. So here's the motor and the gear drive. And then this is the crosshead here. And then the tool attachment point on the end. Over here we've got the switch and then the power plug. So we're going to look through this piece by piece. Let's start with the power plug. It's really just two wires. It, there's not much to it at all. Um, simple friction connections and a couple springs to help push the battery back out. But this, there's nothing interesting there at all. I think it's notable that they used solid wire in this. Usually in high quality tools, they use stranded wire. Um, it's more flexible. It's more resistant to bending. Copper wire, if you bend it a lot, um, go away, will uh, break pretty easily. So we're just gonna get rid of this because we're not gonna need those. All right, now we go into the switch here, and the switch has the two wires that go out here, and then three wires up to here, so this is a variable speed setup. And we're just gonna get rid of all that because we don't need any of that. So, I'm gonna take that part right off. Okay. 
because I have a feeling the part that broke is the switch. Because the rest of this looks pretty much like it's never been used. So let's go all the way back here to the switch. The connections to the switch, wow, this is, this is jank. The connections to the switch are just pressure connections. You can, oh man, that's terrible. All right. I wonder if we can open that switch up easily. It doesn't look like it. I'm deeply unimpressed. Hmm. So now we're down to just the motor drive. And this is just a very simple DC can motor. It's a brush type DC motor. And the motor turns this. And it works much like an engine. You can see there's a counterweight with a flywheel, gear reduction drive. This takes the speed down, but the torque up. And there's a crosshead here. So let's see if we can make it work. I'm going to try, if I have a pair of strippers, well, I'll just do it the hard way. It's solid core wire, and that's really easy to do. So we'll just strip a piece of this wire down. Oh, no, these wires are stranded. The other ones are solid. OK, cool. It's just really hard insulation. OK, so that's that. Let's grab some power. And this is probably like a 12 or 18 volt DC motor. So we'll give it really low voltage DC. See if it'll move. There we go. That's kind of cool. We can turn this really, really low. That's nifty. And you can see the motor turns here. And then this gives us a connecting rod and a crosshead. This part right here where the connecting rod meets the straight shaft is called a crosshead. And this turns rotational motion into reciprocating motion. Now, a car engine does the exact opposite thing. You would have a piston up here being slammed down by an explosion every other rotation. But this does the other way, and then you attach a saw blade on the end. So here, let's speed it up. That is so cool. This is neat. I'm not going to take it apart any further because I just think it's so cool. I'm just going to leave this just like this. I might hook this up with a little DC power supply and make it into a tabletop demo. See, even crappy cheap tools can yield pretty nifty parts. Now I want you guys to comment with what would you build out of this? What cool project could you make out of this? Because I think this could be really neat for like a demonstration of an internal combustion engine if you wanted to make a model of like a, a single cylinder internal combustion engine. You could turn this into some kind of pump with adding a, a cylinder and piston on the end and a couple basic valves. Maybe a model steam engine. There's a lot that could be done with this. It's really neat. Show me what ideas that you have for something like this. And if you're looking to build something like this, it'd be pretty easy because finding old junk reciprocating saws is an easy thing to do. So that is this week's equipment autopsy. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and watching and getting to explore what makes a reciprocating saw work.
I'm Chris Bowden, and you're not. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.